In this video, we're going to look at putting all of those techniques together. So we can see how combining these different formatting options gives us a complete finished product. Let's take the case example, the scenario that your boss has come to you, and it's maybe a quarter to four, and he says, I need this report cleaned up in 15 minutes. I need you to make it presentable because I'm taking it to the board. And at the moment, I've just got this data sheet that one of the database guys has given me, but it doesn't look nice and it doesn't look professional. Please fix it for me. So let's see how we can quickly change the formatting of this document to deliver such a professional document. Well, the first thing that we might want to consider is the background of Excel. So by default, Excel has these grid lines. And most of the time when we're working with the data, that's good. We want to be able to see where the data is contained. We want to see these divisions by columns. But if you're trying to produce a finished document for your manager or his manager, then these lines are not going to be necessarily helpful. He just needs to see a table with data in it. So there's a couple of different options here. The first one is to simply select all cells in the sheet. I've clicked this top corner here. I could also press Control A until I've selected all the cells. And now I can simply apply colouring to the entire document. By applying a white fill, the grid lines are still there, but they are not visible because it's covered by a completely white background. On top of this white background, I can then make changes to the formatting over the top, effectively reversing the background formatting. That is one option. But using that technique can get us into some trouble later if we want to do more complex formatting. Your white background might start to interfere with another background that you are trying to apply. My preferred option would be, first of all, let's undo those changes, to simply remove grid lines. The good thing about this option is it's very easy to do and undo. So we would go to our page layout and remove grid lines. Those dividing lines are again completely removed. And the good thing about this option is we can do all of our other changes and leave the removing of grid lines until the end. Notice this function here is found within page layout and also within the view page or the view tab within the ribbon. Here we have again the grid lines tick box. So let's leave those grid lines on for the minute and work with the rest of the workbook. So let's start off with this column header. It's stretched out to the side. Let's put it somewhere a little bit neater and move that column in. I'm going to take my header and I probably want to make it a bit bigger. So let's start by changing the size and make that text bigger. Maybe too much, let's go back one. Let's maybe change the font style. See if I can find something a bit more mm, elegant or a little bit more uh, expressive. And again, there are plenty of exciting and fancy formats, but is a style like this really professional, really something you want to present to your manager? Maybe not. Let's see what other options we have. Let's just try this Franklin Gothic Heavy. Not bad. Pretty simple, but effective. Again, I might want to create a colored band at the top. So let's give it a background color of, let's say, a nice, light, conservative blue. Similarly here, I may want to change the font. Maybe I don't need to change the font style, but let's bold that text so it's a little bit more visible and maybe slightly increase the text size. This is more of a subheader or a sub subheader. So perhaps we just want to slightly italicize. And maybe maybe we might even want to change the color to be a slightly um, gray font. So it's just, just a tad off full black. My headers, I probably want them to be nice and bold. Let's again add a background color, maybe a deep blue. And then for contrast, I'll make the text white. 
On top of that, maybe I'll make the text bold. Moving on to my number formatting, I'm going to highlight the entire column by selecting the top cell, Control shift and down, and let's find a date format. Let's keep it simple with a short date. Let's apply some number formatting. I'll change that to a number format, currency, and using my format painter, I can click on my format painter, copy that formatting to the clipboard, and apply it to my totals column. My final sales tax column, I can then simply select and add a percentage to it. This is not bad. Perhaps I want to separate the fact that this is a table and make it a bit more, give it a bit more contrast against the back of the page. So let's try selecting all the data, Control A, to just select this table. And I'm going to add some grid borders. OK, that's looking all right. Now perhaps we want to just remove the grid lines and see what we're left with. OK, that's not too bad. One final change we might want to use, and again, this is referring to previous chapters, is get rid of some of my columns. I could do that by selecting all of those columns and hiding them. Now my data sheet is nice and tidy and my user will not wander off the page. OK, let's make a few final touches. Perhaps uh, I want to change the position of this text. Although merging is not ideally recommended, this is a header for my table, so I'm fairly comfortable with merging that information. I use the Merge and Center. Um, but I don't want this text to be aligned to the bottom of the cell, so let's make that uh, center aligned. OK, that works. And perhaps I will just simply make all of my table data left aligned. This is just down to personal preference and how you want to display the data. Another alternative might be to have all of your table data center aligned. It's up to you to experiment and find the best option. Now your document is ready. You could adjust the print settings and export it to a PDF, but probably your manager will just want to see it in Excel format. So you can just save the document and send it to him as is.